Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to be talking to you about the Ice Scale Armor farming location in Titan Quest. So, there's a few different monster and frequents that we're going to be getting here, uh, specifically the entire Ice Scale Armor set drops here, as well as a few other notable monster and frequents. Staff of the Deep is eh, it's kinda good, kinda not good, depends on your role. However, this bow right here, Ichthian Stinger, this is the other really, really good monster and frequent you can get at this location. I'll explain uh, why these are good once we get going in the video, but for right now, I wanted to show you these items to show you what this video is even for and all of that fun stuff. So to get to the monster uh, infrequent farming location, first you're going to want to take the portal to Scandia in Act 5. And then from Scandia, you're going to want to run over here to the boat to uh, Kalpanger, I think it's pronounced. Just uh, go to the same location you see me going. Right over here to Kalpanger. Talk to this guy, and we're going to be sailing to uh, wherever this location, wherever Kalpanger is. And uh, first thing we want to do is we want to grab... Uh, the fountain fine fountain shrine up north because this will be the closest uh fountain shrine to this farming location and uh we want to uh have it so every single time we log out we're going to be at that fountain shrine that way we don't have to teleport to scandia take the boat and you know get back here it'll just be a run south once we log back in So right up here is the fountain that we want, right here. So activate that rebirth fountain. You might have to click on it if uh, you've been through this area once before. It won't activate for you uh, automatically. So these Ichthians obviously uh, are going to be the, the only enemies that we're interested in um, taking out basically they're the only enemies that drop the monster frequency we want so as I as I promised before I'll explain the monster frequency a bit more in detail so the ice scale armor the main reason that people want this ice scale armor is for the damage reflection that comes with it. as you can see on the armor it grants the skill every piece grants the skill it's uh, a 15% chance of 500% damage reflected which is insane uh, insanely high um, basically any build in the game that is doing a damage reflection oriented build, a lot of, um, defense mastery builds like to go this route. They will often have to farm this location until they get enough ice scale armor to make their build work. Um, as far as what good roles you want on ice scale armor, you want, uh, anything that grants resistances on your ice scale armor. Usually I personally like, uh, um, Elemental resistances, but vitality will help too. Poison will help too. Uh, since you're going to be using ice scale armor for your character, you're going to want, you're going to need your resistance, some resistances on the armor, depending on how many pieces of ice scale armor you use and uh, what your other slots may happen to be. So uh, one thing that's uh, worth mentioning, or also cooldown reduction on ice scale armor would help too. Uh, assuming that you're going to be using it for a defense mastery character because usually quick recovery and uh, rally uh, need some cooldown reduction on your gear. Another thing that is uh, worth mentioning about this gear, and this is kind of holds true for basically every monster and frequent in this game, uh, the main, the best pieces of gear that you're that you can possibly find are going to be a. Uh, gear that roll with both a um, prefix and a suffix. So these items, uh, well, you actually can't see them on the monster in frequency, uh, but if you're using a third party program like uh, TQ Vault AE, you will be able to see um, the suffixes, or sorry, the affixes on any gear that drops. Usually um, you only see like, you know, the the name of the items here, ice scale bracers, yada, yada. But if you look at these items in TQ Vault AE, these items will say what their, uh, what their suffix or what their affixes are. Like all of these items here only have a single role on them. They don't have uh they only have either a prefix or a suffix. So 
inherently they cannot possibly be a best in slot item that you can get because they're missing you know half of their rolls that they could possibly get so my point is the best gear you can possibly get here is going to be gear that rolls with both a uh, prefix and a suffix and like I said you can um, determine whether or not your item has these by taking a look at them in TQ Vault AE which is a third party program for Titan Quest and uh, I'm pretty sure I just cleared all of the Ichthians in this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to exit to main menu. And we're going to log back into the game. And like I said before, we will be at that fountain shrine this time. To the north of uh, the location we just farmed. Because we activated it. When you're doing this farming location, I do recommend you uh, get this fountain shrine. Because it, just, it makes it a lot easier. Of course, the alternative is you can just come here after you're done whatever other farm it is you're doing and just clear this area. Run through here, kill what needs to be killed, test your luck, and then, you know, dip. There are, uh, I think there are other Ichthians in Act 5 that is worth mentioning. However, they will not drop the ice scale gear that these drop. These, uh, oh, ice scale guards, there you go. And there you go, there's a pretty good roll right there because they come with 41 pierce resistance on them. Which is exactly what we want on these items. The downside of that item though is it didn't come with uh, two rolls on it. Because it only uh, came with uh, the pierce res, I know it's only one roll. Looking at these items, uh, as you can see, the they all come with a percent chance to avoid projectiles. That, it, that, as well as the reflection skill that comes on the items, is the base roll on them. And uh, since this one only has the chance to avoid projectiles along with the 41% pierce resistance, I can uh, safely assume that the 41% the pierce resistance is one of the uh, affixes on the item. And because it has no secondary, no secondary uh, stats on it, I can tell there's no secondary affix on it. Out of all of the enemies in uh, in this area, the cave that we usually clear last, that will have our best chance of getting um, ice scale gear. Because inside that cave, there is a, uh, a named quest enemy as well as a, uh, a named hero enemy. Um, one thing that is worth mentioning, once you complete the quest that that Ichthian is involved in, you will uh, remove the bonus uh, drop chance from him being a quest enemy. Um... I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Unless the enemy has a uh, swirly ring below him, I'm pretty sure he doesn't get the benefit, uh, the bonus drop chance. At least that's what I heard in a, a popular Titan Quest YouTuber named uh, Clex Plays. In his videos, he talks about that, that once you have completed a quest and that little aura is removed from below the enemy, they no longer have the bonus drop chance that they would have. I have not personally tested this myself, though, so I cannot personally confirm. So just keep that in mind. And this uh, this Ichthian spine you see right here, this is the other item, the other monster and frequent that they drop. Aside from Staff of the Deep, which we went over. This Ichthian spine, though, I don't recommend you even bother picking these up unless you're just going to vendor them. Or unless you find one with a really, really good roll. Uh, there's just, there's better spears in the game. Especially uh, Act Five, you can get uh, you can get way better spears from farming the uh, fire giants at the end of Act Five. And this cave is the one that I'm talking about that has the uh, the hero monster, hero Ichthian occasionally spawns in here as well as the quest Ichthian. And as you can see, the quest Ichthian right there, he doesn't have the um, aura below his feet anymore. Like I said, he doesn't have the little swirly, circly aura. Which, pretty sure that gives up his bonus drop chance. That was all the Ichthians, so we'll exit back to the main menu, log back in, and do another rotation. It is worth mentioning, if you do have uh, X-Max uh, for Titan Quest, 
It will make this uh, farm a bit easier because there will be more enemies for you to farm. Although it will also make it a bit more frustrating because there's a chance of crashing when you're doing the whole bounce mod thing and all of that fun stuff. But it is what it is, right? Anybody who's played Titan Quest for a, uh, a decent amount of time knows how often this game crashes, so you should be used to that. I always run down there. I always forget there's no enemies there. Silly me. As you can see though, this location is pretty easy. Even if you're playing on X Max with like three or four times the enemies, it's still pretty easy. You might have a little bit to worry about inside the cave, but that's about it. And also, uh, see how these Ichthian scale bracers are like below the ice? Keep that in mind. Sometimes uh, items fall through the um, world in this game. It's like a bug that seems to come and go uh, in Titan Quest. With uh, the release of Eternal Embers, it seems to be occurring more frequently. And it, uh, as you can see, this ice scale armor right here, that is quite possibly the worst roll we could ever get on it. Plus 41 armor. It sucks so much I'm not even going to pick it up. Wild Hunt. Interesting. I don't think I've ever gotten that item before. Been playing The Witcher 3 recently, so it's quite cute that I got a weapon called the Wild Hunt. Ice Scale Bracers, so they dropped again. Slow resistance on them. I mean, it's... It's okay. It's an okay roll, but it's still not what I want. I would prefer primary resistances, not secondary resistances. But, I mean, it could be worse. It could be plus 41 armor instead of slow resist. But, as you can see, the drop rate isn't too, too shabby here. Usually, it's, uh, I would say you get one piece, one monster in frequent every three runs. I've been a little lucky this time. I've gotten, like, one or two per run. That's usually quite uncommon for me. And I'm probably going to have to farm this location for like 12 hours or more for when I want to do my uh, reflection-based builds. It's a bit annoying and frustrating, but it is what it is. And we shall do one more run, and then we will call it quits. I've covered mostly all I can cover. Oh, uh, the one thing I wanted to explain about the Ichthian bow, the one that I showed off right there, Ichthian Stinger. The reason that bow is such a fantastic bow in this game is because it has a, uh, what is it, 20% chance? Yeah, 20% chance of uh, like 200% pierce ratio, uh, which will give you basically 100% pierce ratio on your weapon. Because uh, one thing that's uh, worth mentioning is, uh, well, actually, let me check the pierce ratio on it. So the weapon comes with 33% pierce ratio, and uh, the 200% pierce ratio proc that you see on it, that will be 227% of 33%. So it won't give you like two, it won't give you over 100% pierce ratio. It will give you 237% of whatever uh, the pierce ratio is on the weapon, which is 33%. So that's how that uh, little math equation works. Still very, very good. It's just not as good as you might have thought it would be. 
but 237% of 33% is, uh, I think in the 90 percentages. I think that would get you in the 90 percentages as far as pierce ratio goes. Because 100% of 33% should be 33. So that should be 33 plus 33, so that should be 66. Unless my math is just completely wrong. But I, I, th I think that, I think that should be right, and that should give you a hundred. That should give you over a hundred percent pierce ratio. If I'm wrong, collect, correct me in the comments, though. I would love to, uh, love to be corrected and love to get the proper information out there. Thank you to those out there who do post corrections on my Titan Quest videos. I do appreciate it. This game, it's very, very hard to find information for, and uh, it's always nice to have misconceptions corrected in videos because. I have fallen victim to some misconceptions in this game before as well. And uh, it's nice to get the record straight and have appropriate information out there. Ice scale helm, let's see. Oh boy. <laughs> we got two items that rolled plus 40 armor in this uh, video. How unlucky is that? I don't think I have that many good ice scale helms either. That would be a very good, uh, one of the good pieces of armor that you could get. A, if you get a good roll on that, it would be phenomenal. Because that you could put the Crystal of Erebus charm in, which gives you plus two skills, plus 25% vatality resistance. It would just make a, uh, a phenomenal helm for, uh, for that build. However, and of course, you need that prerequisite good, uh, good affix roll. But that's really all there is to it. Uh, this location is pretty straightforward. As you've seen, uh, you can usually do a full clear of it in about five minutes. And uh, the drop rate isn't too shabby either. That's really all I can show you with this video, though. If uh, you guys enjoyed this video and you liked it, please leave me a like because it helps me out. If uh, I got anything wrong whatsoever or uh, you would like to add anything that you think I forgot, please leave a comment below and let me know. And aside from that, I will catch you guys around in future Titan Quest videos. Peace.